Graham did give us a peek into his mindset when he answered questions at an event in his home state of South Carolina last night. Senator Graham had spent Sunday on the golf course with the president, was asked by an audience member why he and a South Carolina congressman also at the forum don't, quote, step up and stop the Mueller investigation. Here's what Senator Graham had to say. Well, did Trump ask that question? <laughs> he must have mentioned that about 20 times. So I told the president, I know you don't like it. I know you feel put upon. You just got to write it out. Well, joining me now is New York Times White House correspondent Maggie Haberman. Maggie, you heard what uh, Senator Graham there said. I mean, the president is clearly, uh, well, I don't want to say stewing, but certainly focused on the Mueller investigation in private. He has been unusually quiet about it on Twitter just in the last 48 hours since his Trump Tower meeting tweet. What, is it, what does it all say you think about his mindset right now? I mean, I think his mindset has been incredibly preoccupied by this investigation for quite some time, but we have heard from several sources it's reached something of a fever pitch uh, in the last two weeks, I think, because of a confluence of uh, events, one of which is uh, the, the audio tape of him talking to his former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, uh, one of which is the Paul Manafort trial. I think there are a number of things um, that are reminding him of the existence of this probe and of questions about Russia, which he, uh, at least on some some level uh, sees as a question of the legitimacy of his presidency. I think that that uh, Trump Tower tweet that you referenced, I think, was sort of a hot stove moment for him. He, he touched the hot stove and then had to back off of it, uh, which he does periodically. His aides were able to say, this is a problem. You can't do this again and get him to basically back off for a while. It obviously will not be forever, but it's going to be for a little bit. Uh, according to CNN's reporting, the president has been urged to stop tweeting, to your point about, about the Trump Tower meeting, uh, that, that advised that it only gives oxygen to the topic. Um, does, it, I mean, does it seem to you he's actually taking the advice from, from those around him on, the, on this particular incident? No, I think he's taking the advice for this moment. I don't think that it has any particular longevity. Look, my colleague Michael Schmidt and I reported that among the, the issues that uh, the special counsel's office is looking at is whether the president's tweets have been intended at various points to influence uh, witnesses in uh, the uh, possible witnesses um, in an investigation into him. Uh, could they be construed as obstruction of justice or part of an obstruction of justice case. And there are some who believe that the more he tweets, even if he's, you know, saying things that he has said before, as he did with this Trump Tower tweet, but he's putting it into much starker relief this time than he did last year, but it's not really new information, um, that he is still creating problems for himself. And I think on this one, for whatever reason, he was finally able to see this was unwise to have done. And, and he is, uh, for the time being, laying off. But I don't expect it to last. Giuliani yesterday told CNN that the president's legal team is preparing to respond to Mueller in the coming days. I mean, it does seem like Giuliani is continually moving the goalpost on this interview between Mueller and the president. Is that a conscious strategy? I mean, I do think that part of their strategy has been to uh, draw this out as long as possible and get it to uh, as close to the window uh, as possible, where Mueller is unlikely to issue a, a report after that. Um, you know, there is this uh, guideline within the Department of Justice about when you do things uh, close to an election. I think it's 60 days from an election you are not supposed to. Uh, and I think the assumption is is that Mueller would follow along with DOJ guidelines. So that gives you a couple of more weeks. Um, we're now looking at eight months that they have been having these negotiations about an interview. Um, Mueller's office, while they have said they want to talk to the president, they do seem to be letting the president's team, and I think the president's team sees advantages in trying to draw this out, um, you can make the, the flip case, which is that Mueller's folks are giving them an awful lot of room by which Mueller's folks can say, we gave them every opportunity and they just didn't take it. Um, I don't believe that whatever they respond to Mueller's proposal with will be an outright no. I believe it will be a counteroffer of some kind, but I don't think we will see that till tomorrow. In, in ter oh, but do you think tomorrow? Yeah, we actually might see that. I do. In, in terms of the Manafort trial, the, the second day of pretty damaging testimony from Rick Gates, how do you think that the, the president is processing that right now? Yeah, I mean, even though it doesn't have uh, so, to do with the campaign, per se. Right. I mean, I think that, well, I think a couple of things. I think that what, I think what would stand out to the president of that testimony, and uh, I think it was too hot out for the president to play golf. We don't know whether he did or didn't because we have not been given um, particularly timely updates about what he's doing uh, at his private club at Bedminster this week on his vacation. But... Um, 
assuming that he is paying as close attention to this as he does to most things that relate to him in some way, I think what would stand out to him is the testimony about uh, whether Rick Gates possibly was reimbursed for personal expenses from the inaugural committee, where he was an assistant to Tom Barrack, who ran that committee and who uh, has been a longtime friend of the president. That would, I think, bother the president quite a bit, and he will not react well to it. And just last, I want to get your read on the Ohio special election tonight, which we're watching closely. The president obviously has some political capital on the line. He campaigned there recently. How do you see it playing out? I, I think that um, making a prediction right now, since we have, yeah. we have, don't know exactly what the vote's going to look like, um, could, <laughs> could be a huge mistake. Um, I think that, uh, you know, if I'm not going to say anything revelatory here, if Republicans uh, win tonight, uh, it will be close. But this will be the model for how they do it in the fall. And it is going to be just straight out scorched earth. Um, if Democrats win, I think it is going to show the power of enthusiasm um, and that there is likely a wave coming. Um, and I think that no matter what happens, you can be assured that Donald Trump is going to make clear that in his mind, it's not his fault at all.